Hi, Professor Baldwin here, and today we're going to look at how to simplify numerical expressions. First, remember that an expression is something that doesn't have an equal sign. Once you have an equal sign, it becomes an equation. And let's review exponents. Our first exponent is read b squared, and the second one is b cubed, or you can even say b to the power of 3. Whenever you have b to some other n exponent, you read that as b to the nth power. So b to the 7 would be read b to the 7th power. b is always the base, and n is your exponent, or the power. b is any real number, and n is a positive integer. Then b to the power of n would be b multiplied by itself n times. Let's look at some examples. Notice that these first three examples all have 4 or the opposite of 4 and an exponent of 2. So it's being squared. And we're going to look at how each of these is slightly different. The first example, 4 squared, is saying 4 times 4 or 16. The second, notice that negative 4 is in parentheses and the exponent is attached to the parentheses. That means whatever's inside the parentheses is what is being squared. Or here you have negative 4 times negative 4. Remember a negative times a negative is going to give us a positive, so this one will also equal positive 16. Now look at example 3. Here there's no parentheses, so that exponent of 2 is only attached to the 4. This could also be written as negative 1 times 4 squared. So what we see here is negative 1 times 4 times 4, or negative 1 times 16, and this situation results in a negative 16. Since we're talking about exponents, we're also going to talk about square roots. The square root is the inverse operation of squaring a number. And the principal square root, which is what we're going to deal with at, at this point, is the non-negative root. So it's the positive values. An nth root is when you have this index of something other than 2. Notice that the square root above doesn't have a 2. That's implied by the square root symbol. But whenever your index is greater than 2, it would replace this n. And you'd read that the nth root of 3, of a. I was thinking about doing a cube root. So if you have an index of 3, and a is your radicand, this would be the cube root. And once you get above 3, you would say the fourth root, the fifth root, and so on. Let's stick with just square roots, and let's look at three examples again, all with the number 4, because we know that 4 is a perfect square. 4 is equal to 2 squared. So if you take the square root of 4, that would be the square root of 2 times 2, and that would be equal to 2. Well, example 2 is telling you what? The negative on the outside, remember that's saying the opposite. So what's the opposite of the square root of 4? Well, the square root of 4 is 2, so the opposite would be negative 2. Now, example 3, we have a negative inside. So our radicand is negative. Remember, the square root is saying what number squared got us this thing inside. So what number can you square and get a negative 4? Well, it's not a real number. So right now, this stage of our math learning, we cannot take the square root of a negative radicand. And we're just going to say that it's not a real number. Because as of this point, we don't know of any numbers other than real numbers. 
Now let's review the order of operations. Remember the order of operations starts with parentheses. You're gonna do anything within parentheses or some sort of grouping symbol. A square root is a type of grouping symbol. Your next step is to tackle the exponents. Third, you multiply and divide at the exact same time, but you do it from left to right. Just like you read a book, you read your math from left to right. And then the last step, you're gonna add and subtract from left to right. In this example, we're given some values for our variables of A, B, and C. We're gonna substitute those in, and then we're going to use our order of operations to simplify. So if we substitute those in, B squared, would be negative 6 squared and we're subtracting 4 times a which is 2 times c which is 4. First would be our parentheses. So we're going to do this negative 6 squared. Negative 6 times negative 6 is a positive 36. And then we have 4 times 2 times 4. Our next step is going to be multiplying. So we're going to multiply 4 times 2 times 4. Well, 4 times 4 is 16 times the 2 is 32. And then our last step is going to be subtraction, 36 minus 32 which is four. So we have completed everything inside of the radical, which remember the radical is a type of grouping symbol. And now we can calculate the square root of four, which we've done previously, and that would be two. Let's look at another example of applying the order of operations. And here we have a fraction, and we've got a lot going on in the numerator and the denominator. Remember that our radical is a grouping symbol, so we're going to start with that. So let's start with the radical here in the numerator. And we have the square root of 16 minus 7, which would be the square root of 9. And we can rewrite the rest. So we did parentheses, next would be our exponents. Exponents are going to be this sweet three squared as well as taking the square root of nine, 16, and four. So let's do each of those. The square root of nine is three. Three squared is three times three, which is nine. The square root of 16, so what number times itself is 16? That's 4 minus the square root of 4. We've done that a couple of times today. That would be 2. And now our last step is going to be adding and subtracting from left to right. So 3 plus 9 in the numerator, which is 12, and 4 minus 2 in the denominator, which is 2. And we can actually simplify 12 over 2, which is 6. We're going to verify the solution we got above, 6. Let me write that down here. And we're going to verify this with our graphing calculator. So our graphing calculators use the order of operations just like we do. So you need to be very careful with how you enter things into your calculator in order to get the correct answer. Now, we're gonna separate the numerator and the denominator. So first we're gonna enter the numerator. And when we do that, we're gonna use parentheses to show that we have the numerator. So we'll put our numerator in, and then we're going to do division, and then we'll put in our denominator. So let's look at that graphing calculator. So parentheses, and then we're gonna start with our numerator. First, we have the square root. So here it's that blue icon, so we have to hit second and then square root, and it gives us the square root. And we're gonna enter 16 
Notice the 16 is staying inside the square root as a radicand. And with this calculator, I can hit subtraction and then seven, and it stays within the square root. Some calculators, you have to use parentheses. It'll usually give you the first parenthesis for the radicand, and then you'll close it. Here, you notice that it's flashing this arrow to the right. To get out of that radical, I have to hit to the right. And you see it truncated or ended that radical bar. Now we can add the rest of the numerator. So we're adding three and we're going to do our exponent here, even though it's squared, we're gonna use what's called the caret key. That's this arrow here, just above the division symbol. This will allow you to enter any exponent, and we're going to enter our exponent of two squared. Notice again, we've got this little arrow flashing to the right. That's telling us if you wanna get out of that exponent, hit the arrow to the right. We finished our numerator. So let's close the parentheses, enter the division, and start parentheses to do our denominator. We have a radical, so we do second, and we get that square root. We enter the 16. Again, I have to hit over to get out of that square root, and then I hit subtract. I enter another square root, and then four, hit the arrow over again to get out of that square root. I can close my parentheses and I'll hit enter and we get the same answer, six. It may take a little bit of practice with your calculator to figure out exactly how to enter the problems correctly, but it's great to practice with it. It helps you check your own work and helps you get comfortable with that calculator. Thank you for watching. I hope this video was helpful. And if it was, I hope you will check out my other math videos for some more help.